We are back, Jack. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another exciting episode of Off the Top with Rikishi Fatu. I am your co-host, TMD. We would like to thank our sponsor for this evening. That's going to be Knox Pro Entertainment. Knox Pro Entertainment, located in Van Nuys, California. You want to find out all things Knox Pro, all you got to do is log on to the World Wide Web at www.knoxpro.com. Big Keish, welcome back, man. Hey, How man, you feeling? What it is, man. I'm I'm jet lagged. You just came back from Ireland. Please tell us yeah, all about it. It was crazy, man. I'm sorry I didn't get to bring your Jameson back. Oh, I didn't have enough time. It's really. okay. I mean, you, you may do. No, nah, well, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> well, so we, when I got there, man, it was four in the afternoon. Flew all night. Uh, got there, and then uh, what it was? I had a hard time sleeping that night. Uh, so a day early and started early the next morning, and man. Uh, the people of uh, Belfast, boy, Dublin area, all the whole Ireland, they all came out loud and proud, man. It was sold out. Another great event by Monopoly Events. You know, they're the biggest uh, uh, company that runs all these huge Comic Cons overseas. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I want to uh, send a big shout out to my peoples at uh, Gimmick Promotions, uh, Jared Bird, the promoter there. So, you know, yeah, so it was great, man. I, I ain't been back to Belfast, I don't know, 25 years, Joey. I was there last time I was there wrestling for WWE, and, you know, I, I didn't get a chance to, you know, remember the city because we'd only fly in, do the show, back on, the you know, the bus, and we're driving three miles, or I mean, uh, three hours, four hours to the next city. So when I got there this time, you know, I got a chance to just kind of, you know, get up in the morning, smell the fresh air, mm. you know, had a few beers because that's what they do in the morning. There. Any whiskey? After, no, I didn't have no whiskey. No, no because it was just in the morning. Had a few beers and stuff, but just something to kind of just because I was real bad jet lagging. Okay, I knew I had to go to work, and we was out there eight hours, man. Sold out. Uh, they all came out Sunday. It was another sold out. It was good to, you know, see Mick Foley. Yeah, the Attitude Era crew. Yeah, the you. Attitude Era leader. Yeah. You know, and uh, Trish, Trish Stratus. Stratus was there. As white, uh, I mean, as as uh, no, no, you're right. No, you're no, right. I, she white. I mean, <laughs> no, as not, as right. Uh, I don't know what I was trying to say, but yeah, we all know Lita's white. Yeah, I mean, if I would have said black or brown, then they would have probably damn Keisha's still drunk, or, or he might be drunk or something. But yeah, the whole mm. attitude era was there, my man. Yeah. You know, and uh, yeah, so it was great, man. You know, got to hang out with uh, the Uso uh, over there with Cooper Andrews. You know, he's uh, one of the characters that, uh, I'm not Walking, walking Dead, uh, what is it? Nah, I'm, I'm trying to, I'll, I'll come back to it. That's right, okay. But you see him on my post on there, so just click on his link and uh, and follow and check him out. So, yeah, so I'm home for three weeks, and then I'm back out there for Monopoly events. Uh, this one, we're going into UK. You are on a world tour uh, coming up here, uh, yeah. speaking of the UK. It doesn't stop for you. You you got the UK coming up. Did you say Canada? Like or I got to go to Canada. I'll be up there in uh, Hamilton, uh, Hamilton, Ontario, uh, within, uh, what, two weeks from now. And then the following week, I'm in Boston, Massachusetts for the Horicon. So make sure you push up there. That'll be the 27th and the 29th. And then come home for two days. And then on the third, fly directly to UK for the Comic Con on the fifth and uh, and the seventh. You're globe trotting. You're all over the world. That, that's man, crazy. I'm just you know, I'm just still you know grinding. Still just doing what I love, man. You know, and I, I love just you know fellowshipping with all the fans and hearing their stories and so forth. You know, we had a great time over there. I haven't uh, done a Q and A with Mick Foley. Uh, so part of that was our, you know, a celebrity panel, uh, during one of those days, I think it was Sunday and, uh, you know, it was well over a minute. I want to say well over a thousand people that were there wow. uh, for our panel and our panel is only like 45 minutes and, and man, to, you know, to be able to go back down, you know, memory lane with the fans talking about the attitude era and, you know, too cool and Rikishi and, you know, the family career, of course, the bloodline had to. A lot of that had to come up, you know what I mean? And to hear Mick Foley's stories, you know, you know when we first met in uh, 1986, I think, in... Uh, WCW? Uh, no, it was uh, back in Texas oh, wow. for the Von Erichs. Oh, wow. uh, you know, World Championship Wrestling back mm -hmm. in the day. And I was like, dang. You know, we knew each other for that long, you know what I mean? And to be able to sit there and, uh, uh, you know, hear some of the fans' stories and hear, you know, his story as well, it, it was very... 
very uh, refreshing. And it, and it made me think like, damn, I've been in this for a, for a minute. Straight up. You know what I mean? Yep. And, and when you when you love something, man, you know, you got passion for it, you, you don't even count the time. You know what I mean? You just count that time when, you know, as far as the years, you don't count all that. You just, you know, you just in that moment. And then, you know, you, you're, that moment was so good. You're looking for that next moment. How can it be better? You know, adapt as a professional wrestler, as an entertainer, right? And to be able to, you know, how blessed you are uh, to be able to travel the world and to do what you love and to meet the greatest fans in the world. Uh, that's, that's just an awesome feeling. And I'm not ready to give that up. Right. You know, I gave up getting in the ring, but I'm not ready to give up, you know, meeting, greeting the fans, you know, throughout the world. Let's talk mm. about uh, what was your last official match? Man, I can't remember. I think 10 years ago, Joey. Okay. Uh, most of my time was here at Knox Pro. I remember with the remember Territory that? League. Yeah, Territory League been and stuff in the like ring that. with you many a times yes, trying sir. to teach you guys. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. that was the beautiful thing with you students mm -hmm. was when I was active, I was in the ring with you guys, and we were just, you know, we doing things on the fly. All you guys doing, just listen. Yes, sir. You know, Jacob, you know, he was he was blessed to have that moment, you know. Oh, you as well. Yes, you know, your your classmates and teammates uh, from that era. And, uh, yeah, so, you know, a lot of kids like today, I wouldn't even step in the ring with any of them. And and I'll tell you why. It's because at this time and age of my career, you know, for me, it's like I I love the business, want to get in there to, to uh, pretty much, you know, feel the students. and But I can't take that chance to get in there and have some of these students that are not smart just out of nowhere accidentally go to try to kick me or drop kick because they felt it was the right thing to do and hurt you and hurt me and blow out my knee. See, I'm not I'm not the age where you guys can uh those younger cats, you know, you, you heal up quick. You know, and and and, and my situation is different, man, because I'm still like, you know, with the the pain, the aches and pains from the years, you know, I'm I'm still dealing with all that, right? It's getting better. As, as the weight drops and as I start to really take good care of myself and one thing I did was focus on me now. Good. Because my whole crew, everybody's good, right? You, you work so hard to make sure the responsibilities and everybody is set and is good. Now it's time for Kishi to turn around. It's like, you know what? It's my turn. And so, you know, I, I've... Uh, enjoy this journey that I've been on, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, I feel great. And then uh, there's going to be more for me to, you know, more for me to do. I'm not done Absolutely. Yet. No, not at all. Yeah. You know what? I, <clears throat> one thing I really love about uh, pro wrestling and uh, you traveling the world with your peers, I love how you can go anywhere in the world and, yeah. and, and it's a reunion with your, your uh, peers, like Mick Foley, Trish yeah. Stratton, <clears throat> anywhere in the world. You're able to uh, go back and, and hang out with some of those people that you ran the world with back, years back. Mm. Uh, when you're out there traveling, uh, who is somebody that you just love? You can't wait, or you see them across the room, and man, you just light up. Who's somebody that just brings an instant smile to your face? Oh, my whole BSK crew. Okay, okay. Godfather, Undertaker, uh, you know, the Godwin, Savio Vega. You know, uh, we just have that vibe, like... You, you, we don't even have to say anything. Is this as soon as I see you, mm -hmm. we all just laugh <laughs> for no reason. We don't know why we laugh at him. Well, you know what I mean? It could be a laugh from continuing on from last tour or whatever. Yeah. But we just laugh because we just, you know, for me, it's like I'm just so happy to see you, man. And then we then, then we checking each other out, like, all right, you know what I mean? Like, what type of clothes he wearing? What type of shoes? And, <laughs> and we just start capping, ribbing each other. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. But it's all out of love, man. And yes, and you know when you see people you you love and you care about, and it, it makes the 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 tour of the reunion goes that much easier because it's it, it's it, it take a toll on you for eight hours smiling. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And stand up, take photos, sit yeah. down. The chairs are not the most comfortable chairs. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. And you, all, you get arthritis in your fingers, like, and then your neck, your vertebrae is hurting because you're bending 
forward, you're looking down while you're signing the eight by ten or the autograph. Mm-hmm. So once you try to do that for like sixteen, you know, yeah. hours, however long that that Comic Con is, uh-huh. it kind of get to you, man. So, but you know, I always like when it's done, and then you you already an hour before it's done, you're already texting your friends, hey, where are we going tonight? <laughs> let's, let's you know the the hotel restaurant got a good steak. Let's meet up there, and then we can call it from there. So. Yeah, so it's, it is kind of like a high school reunion, man. That's so cool. When you get to see everybody at these Comic Cons. I saw you in Philly, and man, <laughs> to see everybody walk up to you and just show you love uh, was really, really cool. Um, and, and I like seeing the smiles on uh, your face, David's face as well, when you guys were running into your peers out there. Yeah. So while you were out there, you're back now, safe, that's good. Uh, let's, uh, let's talk about SmackDown. So big, let's talk about it. Big news <clears> coming <throat> out. There, there's a lot of big news coming out right right about now. But uh, let, let's focus on uh, SmackDown right about now. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk about Sol Sokoa, of course, and Cody Rhodes facing off. And uh, Cody Rhodes issues uh, a challenge, uh, you know, for his WWE Undisputed uh, Championship. Okay. And, and, of course, the viewers all think he's talking about Solo. But, no, he challenges your nephew, Jacob Fatu. So uh, Jacob Fatu didn't take the challenge. But uh, I just, mm. I can't believe that we're already here. Like, Jacob's getting title shots. Uh, I wanted to know your your thoughts about that. Well, I'm not surprised. You know what I mean? Again, it goes down to where, you know, this, this is just my humble opinion. If you guys are listening and you're writing this stuff, write down what I'm saying. Yes, please. All right? This is just my humble opinion. And, like, I don't know. I think Jacob is being pushed too fast. When you go to Cody, where do you go from there? Cody is the guy right now. I, I've said this before. Let let Katie, uh, let uh, Jacob rampage through the whole roster. You know, give him give him the couple of those uh, uh, those uh, uh, enhancement matches. You know what I mean? To build, he, he don't need but three minutes to. Uh, you know, again, we've seen Jacob however long he's been on a couple of months or whatever. But is there anything different? Have you seen? You can only do so much. On a run in. This is right, me. This right. is what I'm saying. Right. You really want to go with a guy, show his talent. Put him out there with somebody that let him have a, you know, not a match match, a squash match, but just so he can show his potential of what else this kid can do. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. I uh I didn't watch, you know, I haven't watched TV since I was overseas. You're busy, yeah. Yeah, and I just, you know, the time-wise was, uh, I was messed up on time, but, uh, yeah, I didn't, uh, I think that they're, they're, you know, booking him and uh, whoever's in, you know, putting these matches together. I just feel if it was me, I wouldn't feed Jacob to Cody. That match is not deserving yet to happen. Right. So uh, it looks like he he bowed down, and, and it looks like he's not going to take the challenge which man, this Good is for Jacob. This is riveting storytelling. I'm, 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 yeah. you know, I'm trying not to be biased because I, I, I know Jacob and, and love him uh, so much. Uh, but th- what I'm watching is really great television. So now the, it's even building up more. And like you said, man, we might even see a war games because uh, we still got Haku's son, the, yeah. uh, his third son, who's not even come in yet. We still got other members. So uh, is that true? He's he's signed up. Uh, because I I have no idea if uh, Haku's third son, uh, yeah, uh, Hikilo, uh, Haku. They've been putting some teasers, right? But that's it, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, no, no nothing has yeah. been uh, official, like a referee whistle just yet. But uh, okay. I, I I think you might be onto something with the war games, uh, uh, because it, it's just looking. Uh, Man, something's gonna go down because Jacob's gonna want to step up and not be in the shadow. He's not gonna want to be the enforcer his whole career. You know what I mean? So I'm yeah. just uh, I'm wondering what the what the next move is. And like you said, like where does he go after after Cody Rhodes? Yeah, where do you go? Yes, sir. Like I mean, fans, if you're listening uh, to this podcast, by all means, put down your your answers on the comments, and we can we can discuss this right then and there. And where do you go? Because normally when you see a guy. Being fed to the top guy so fast, yeah. We only know one thing: what's going to happen? It's an enhancement uh, match for the person whoever's on top. I don't think they're going to do that. I, no, yeah. I don't. No, yeah. and I, I just don't think that Jacob's the guy for that. Right? It doesn't do Jacob any good. Cody's branded, right? It doesn't matter who Cody goes with, right? But if if you throw a guy like Jacob there. Well, what does that do for Jacob? 
what I, I don't, you know, we, we all, all wrestling fans, we're all smart, right? Sir. And those that are, you know, uh, that are, you know, uh, putting this thing together, I think, you know, I think they make a mistake to be able to put Jacob, you know, in the main event with Cody so fast. Sir. You know, so let, let's just hope that, you know, Things change, as you know. It's always subject to change. Absolutely. Right. Um, are, are we able to get the picture up? So, Big Quiche. Yeah. I wanted to get your thoughts on this. So, this is the picture that I saw last night. I'm going to tell you the caption behind the picture in a second here. Okay. That's my niece Vaughn, uh, my son Solo, and uh, my nephew Jacob. That's Vaughn out there in uh, <laughs> Georgetown University. Man, you know, she plays volleyball out there. She's a killer on the field. So killer. That picture was when uh, they came to uh, DC. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I was very happy that uh, she got the chance to see the boys uh, before they left that night. You know, it's it's very uh, with their scheduling. Normally, it's just a show. Boom, they're you know back out, jumping in the car, going to where uh, wherever they need to go to the next town or catch a flight. Right. And it was so nice to... I seen that picture. It came up online someplace. Yeah. They're all talking about Vaughn is going to be the next. What? So, wait a minute. Let's talk uh, about this. Over because, Reno's dead body. Yeah, because uh, guess guess yeah. what? Guess what? You know Vaughn very well because oh, yeah. you're very close to Vaughn. That's why I, when I first saw that, I was like, I can't wait to sit down and talk to you. So, so first of all, out there, people, that is the daughter of the uh, Black Pearl, uh, my, my my trainer. I've known her since she was very, very, very little. Five doing, years old. Yeah, uh, doing the, uh, the raffle, the 50-50 raffles and whatnot. She literally grew up just like Samson in mm -hmm. this business, like all your other sons. Uh, the the word on the street is, the, the ballyhoo, is that WWE is showing interest in Vaughn. That blew, uh, that blows my mind on several accounts. Because first of all, let, let's talk about it. Uh, w in what sense do you think Big Keish is in on a wrestling aspect or broadcasting? Because Vaughn is very talented. She's a she uh, Georgetown. Come on now. Uh, I used to they say they might be looking for a new uh, entertainment attorney. There it is because she can do anything. <laughs> Everything she can do she's, whatever she's she sets a, her mind to. Athlete. You guys know Vaughn, and she's a beast of an athlete uh, well, as a volleyball player. That she's an athlete. Very she's well spoken. She's in front of the camera. She's smart. Just like her mom. She's beautiful. Yep, she's, uh, yep. She can adapt. She's, uh, you know, whatever. She sets her mind to it. But you... I, I, don't, I don't, you know, see her, uh, if in case, you know, with a miracle, something happens, she uh, <laughs> convince her dad right? about the, <laughs> going to the wrestling business. I always tell our kids, go do something else, but just know it's there. Just know it's there. If anything else, you know. And that's like Sefa. Sefa graduated in college, you know, and he's got his uh, uh, major of uh, physical therapy. And I thought for sure this kid going to go open up something. Uh -huh. You know, I ain't got to worry no more. Because I was telling, man, that, uh, you know, that Medi-Cal money, man, and that insurance money never right. cancels, son. Right, right. Never cancel. <laughs> you know what I mean? And out of the blue, he want to go try it. And let alone, like, look at him now. You know what wow. I mean? So I can't stop these kids here from... Wanting to at least try, you know, if it's a thought or a vision in their mind, like, yeah, but I don't know, VRA, boy, that's going to be a tough one. To, did you ever... Me, I'll support whatever she wants to do. Right. Did, but did she you know, because I'm her favorite uncle. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I've seen all the drawings. She's been drawing you and, and, and Reno uh, Black Pearl well, since she's she like, was a little dude, kid. I, I have one daughter. Yep. She's grown, Tavana's grown like 40 years old now. And all these years of Samson, me being in L.A., you know, that's all, you know, that's all we know is uh, Reno's family here. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, you know, Tiffany and, you know, Mama Prancy and Vaughn and Sam's are, what, four years old, five years old? Holding and we bring down. them to the domain. Yeah, holding it down, had running them do shit. do the 50-50. So <laughs> they were in the front of a crowd. What was it, 250 people? Yes, sir. And not a shriver in their body. No, call they it get, shots. You remember when Samson came back, Marco played the wrong music? The, yeah, it was, <laughs> he didn't what, stop. He kept going. He kept going. Yeah, it was uh, Bruno Mars music. That's when I was hot back in the day. And he came back and cut a cut a promo on Marcos. <laughs> you remember that? I had to, hey man, watch your mouth. I was on the about? outside and I just remember the professionalism. He didn't panic. 
He let it come organic yeah. and just did what he did. But my my yeah, your your mm, son sure. Vaughn have grown up around this business. So it, it does not surprise me that Samson's playing football and he'll probably stick with that, you know. Uh, yeah. but Vaughn seeing her and WWE in the same sentence really threw me through a loop last night. Yeah. Be- yeah. Uh, so you don't ever see her wrestling, do you? Or 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 do you said you would support whatever she would I'll do. I support whatever. Yes, she, sir. Yes, sir. I think her bashing is, uh, you know, uh, uh, volleyball. She's been yeah. with it for a minute, man. Now, you know, they, I see her, they put up all their, you know, their little teasers from uh, Georgetown, the yeah. volleyball. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so, so happy to see my niece on there. Just you get a little highlight and she just killing it in there. You know what I mean? Man. And, uh, you know, it's all that Knox Pro, Knox Pro teaching. Yes, it is. As I'm sure, you know, her pops is there. Every weekend, and her mom. Yeah. So they 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 right there in the stands every week. These guys are out there. So, so yeah, you know, I'm I'm uh, I seen that that photo float around, and yeah. I was like, leave it to the wrestling fans. Watch what the watch what they write. <laughs> Anything with the bloodline, the Samoan dynasty. And we're not done with the bloodline. It's yet always that, you know, because um, we're gonna <clears throat> shift things uh, now to Monday Night Raw with your son Jay Uso, the Yeet Man, the Yeet Meister. Okay. <laughs> The heat is on, baby cakes, because Jay Uso has just secured the number one uh, contender spot for the Intercontinental Championship. So, yeah, let's get back. a round of applause on that one. Yes, sir. All right. Back in the championship yeah. picture. I hope they do the right thing, I guess. You know what I mean? I yes, say, sir. <laughs> when I voice my opinion, damn, yeah, boy. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that, my forehead starts sweating. I can feel all the heat the, coming the, my the way. The heat gets the heat. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I was like, hey, I'm just speaking as a father, though. Like as any other father, father like any who other, would. Tell me any other father would not be speaking up for their son or their daughter about blah, blah, blah. Right? And yeah. so let, let's, uh, let, let's, uh, let's see what happens, you know? Um, Could this possibly? That, that's news to me, yes, sir. Again, I ain't you know I ain't been you know tapping in or tuning in, but mm. uh, yeah, you know we'll we'll see what 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 can possibly happen. Um, the way I see the tables turning, I see it. I see it turning for the Yeet Man, you know, and then we'll we'll see from there. Or it might be an outside interference, you know. Yes, sir. It could be somebody or. I don't know. It could be another bloodline member. Or there's just so many ways we can go with this. Yes, sir. And this is just my humble opinion, damn it. Ain't ain't like me, like y'all think I'm giving away a finish or something. (laughs) How can a guy not working for WWE give away a finish? Right. Yeah, drop bombs on him again. You think about it long enough, it'll it'll come come to you. you. (laughs) That's right. Smarten up. Yes, sir. Is right. So, man, yeah. also in the news right now is, uh, you know, we've talked about the Pauls, the the Jake Paul, the Logan Pauls yeah. uh, here on the uh, web, uh, podcast a few times. And uh, uh, we're, we're, I, I like say, that dude. I, I was just going to say. I'm right? a big fan of Jake. I was just going to say that, Big Keish. I'd say that we we are both fans uh, of the, the Paul brothers. The Paul, uh, Logan Paul, to yeah. be more specific, uh, he uh, he uh, ticked off one Kevin Nash this week, and the two uh, have been kind of going at it uh, on the interwebs out there. And basically, yeah. in in a nutshell, Kevin Nash was uh, uh, hot about how basically Logan Paul's making five million a year, and he's not even making house shows. He's only doing a little bit of shows, and, and basically, and quote unquote, he's not one of the boys. Logan Paul shot back with with, with the, he he kind of buried <laughs> Kevin Nash and basically said, "Yeah, who are you? Never heard of you. Hit him with that." And yeah. basically, he be bur- he proceeded to bury him. My question to you is, uh, if you're making five million uh, a year, and I'm saying, hate the game, don't hate the player. Right? Do you have to uh, make the house show? Should you get I'm heated saying, if you don't make the hate house? Hate the game. Don't hate, hate the, the player. player. Drop bombs on me. Can you hear me? That's what I'm saying. Like, hey, if he got five mil, it's called negotiations. That means whatever team he brought, whatever negotiate, because as last I knew, all I see is prime around that ring. <laughs> right. You know, and it's called negotiations. Show business. And it ain't. No, I'm, this, boy, <laughs> boy, <laughs> boy, come on now. Oh, don't, 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 hey, hate the game, not the player. 
You know, mm -hmm. Jake Paul, mm -hmm. big up to Jake Paul if that's what he did. Mm -hmm. If you're making that type of money, man, hey, now. Yeah. Hey, you, yeah, I don't give a damn about being the boys then. That's what you he said. You know what I mean? You got that, your bag. That's what, that's what he what said. Is, if you be one of the boys, you're going to make, is your bag going to be bigger? Because I guarantee you not, not a damn one of the boys give a damn about your bag that, that you making. Right. They ain't going to tell you what they making. You dig? So, hey. Hey, man, you know, hate the game, not the player, man. Yeah. Because, you know, hey, that boy, Jake Paul, is a hustler. He's a hustler. He's one hell of an athlete. And listen, if he's not a full-time, if he's not a full-time uh, wrestler, mm -hmm. yeah, good for him. So he was saying that, too. Logan Paul was saying that. He says, you know what? I don't even do this full-time, and, and this is what he said. I'm better than half of that dressing room back there. Okay. And now, see, my, my question to you, Big Keish, is, uh, you know, uh, how much, I mean, I, I know you've been on the road, so you haven't caught any of this, but mm -hmm. because that's Triple H's boy, Kevin Nash. Mm -hmm. You think <clears throat> Triple H, the boss, is going to let his employee cut a promo? Because Logan Paul uh, recorded a, a, a response to Kevin Nash yeah. and ended it with, F me? No. F you. Is what he said to Kevin. Well, Ke I mean, hey, if that's what Kevin said to him, I, well, we don't know what, what Kevin said. Obviously, Jake Paul heard it. Reasons why he's given that, you know, that reply back. So, I mean, be it Kevin Nash, be it Jake Paul, even if it's just us right here, you come to open up your mouth about what my bag, what I'm making, and blah, blah, then you hit me with the F-bomb? I'm saying, boy, <laughs> boy, you out your <laughs> mind, And Logan man. Paul can Bro, you know, it doesn't throw. matter, but just the right, you, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, man? It just, don't hate, hey, don't hate that player, man. Hate the game, man. There it is. That's what it is. The bag is the bag. Ain't that what we all in it for? Yes, sir. I mean, it, 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 obviously, Jake is a huge, he has to be a huge fan of WWE. Huge fan. Anybody that that's a fan of wrestling, you dream to get in an opportunity to WWE. If you're not, then why are you in this business? But to be able to come in and have access, opportunity, exposure, yeah. and get his brand out there, and half time, not a full time, and making $5 million, come on, man. <laughs> come on now. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Somebody got a good negotiation team. Right. Somebody got a son. <laughs> hey, amen to that. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It ain't. Come on now. Yeah. So there it yeah, is. Y'all make up. Kevin, <laughs> Kevin, Kevin Nash, <laughs> Jake Paul, y'all make up. You know? Yeah. Y'all make up. I was just wondering. Time is too short. Absolutely. A lot of beefs going on this yeah. year. A lot of beefs going on this year. <laughs> and uh, Don't get the beef. Eat it, man. That's hey, right. Y'all sit down and have a have a beef have a beef together just eat it <laughs> come on now man you know uh you know um I, i'll wrap this up with this uh big quiche in the news <sighs> was uh one of your favorite we're gonna talk a little about hip-hop we haven't talked about hip-hop in a while so uh, i saw some hip-hop news out there yeah uh, slash wrestling okay so uh and we're gonna show another picture uh we're gonna add it in post so on a one to ten basis big quiche i gotta ask you how much does Nicki minaj Resemble Hulk Hogan. <laughs> uh, not a damn thing. Because <laughs> I know you like N Nicki Minaj. Yeah. You're a big fan, so I just had to ask you because your girl out there. I mean, uh, no. Have you seen? Uh, have you seen uh, the backside of you know Nicki Minaj? <laughs> have you seen the apple bottom butt on Nicki Minaj? <laughs> Now you just turn that page of Hulk Hogan, all you see is like a slippery water slide. <laughs> ain't no ain't no apple bottom back there now. No, brother. No apple bottom at all. No, I mean, brother. Hell, Hogan would probably drown in my thong. <laughs> 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 now, Nikki might fit it. Yes. Nikki might fit yes. my yes. thong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you yeah. put my thong on Nikki, she probably fit it. <laughs> you know what I mean? But you put it on Hogan, man, it, it'll just slide right off, man. I, I, it'll be I, like I. a dental floss to him. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> the vision. I don't know. Like, I hope that, did you just make that up about no. Nikki looking no. like Hogan? No. So you, that's out there. Nikki Minaj was on that's, a live. Frank, you can back me up yeah, on this. So she was what? She was, on a, she was doing a, a, a Facebook Live type of deal. And what did she say? And a fan... A fan called in and said, hey, okay. you look like Hulk Hogan. And her hey. girl in the background was yeah. dying laughing. Nikki got embarrassed, blocked the dude. No, and it was on Facebook uh, Live, so the whole world saw it. 
and she looked. We're going to show you the picture on post. So, so Nikki blocked the fan? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I wouldn't. Come on, Nikki. But, but she was wearing the bandana, Nikki. brother, with, 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 the, with the blonde see. extensions. Oh, see, I would have <laughs> I would have smart Nikki up on that. Let me see. <laughs> no, nah, Nikki don't look nothing like uh Nah, she right. don't look. So on like a one to brother. ten basis, you're gonna say you're gonna go with zero. Zero, absolutely. Okay, I just had to be sure, big kids. I just had to be. Man, I just had to be sure. You've been traveling. You've been doing zero a lot of stuff. Zero all the way around. Yes, sir. That's right. All the way around. Yes, sir. You've you've been yeah. doing a lot of traveling. So you know, I, I you know, I thought maybe. See, my mind's here. Yeah, that, yeah. that's right. So uh, speaking well, of traveling, come to Nicki Minaj, my mind clear up quick. <laughs> <laughs> Apple bottom butt. That my mind clear up real quick. We're still waiting uh, yeah. for the feature on the next album, Big oh, Keisha. Right. Uh, featuring uh, Nicki Minaj. I'm just, I'm just a big fan of Nicki. That's, that's right. That's right. I'm a big fan. Of it. She a legend, man. She a legend in my book. Well, Big Keith, you're yeah. a busy man and a legend as well. So we're going to uh, uh, tap in with you uh, next time, let you go for this evening. Do you have any final words for your listeners? Hey, y'all, continue to tune in. I want to thank y'all, thank y'all, thank y'all uh, for always pushing through and supporting the podcast. And remember, it's free to be kind to one another. And always, always smarten up. Give me a yeet. Mm.